हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द सीरीज ए आर डी एल मॉडल इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव डिफाइंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ योर ए आर डी एल बॉन्डर दैट मीन्स को इंटीग्रेशन एंड देन अबाउट द एर करेक्शन मॉडल दैट मीन्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैन इफ देयर इज अ लॉन्ग टर्म रिलेशनशिप दैट मीन्स देर इज अ को इंटीग्रेशन टू वेरिएबल्स आर को मूविंग देर इज अ को ट्रेंडिंग so then there will be the long term relationship and hence if it is a long term relationship then we have to find the error correction model error correction term and error correction term will be negative if you remember in the last video i have talked about the interest rate and inflation that means as per the theory interest rate and inflation are co integrated and they are having the long term relationship so in the future some external shocks can affect or you can say can deviate either the inflation or the interest rate as we have already discussed that there is a monetary policies that the government apply for inflation and uh, this interest rate they make interest rate as a tool to correct the inflation so now in this lecture i am going to show you how interest rate and inflation are co integrated and what will be the error correction term if in the future there is a deviation either in the interest rate or the uh, inflation so i have uploaded the file i have imported the file the same file i am working on the same file in which i was working in the previous videos so there are two variables there are many variables for fdi exports usd inr imports inflation but right now since i have started with the inflation and interest rate i have given you the literature about this uh, about in inflation and interest rate so we will be talking about the co integration between inflation and interest rate i have already imported the file i have attached the file now what you have to do you have to library certain things so first of all you have to library war package and then you have to library d lag m package these two packages you have to library it so if we talk about the steps that we have done it in the previous videos so i have already written the steps so our model in ardl bond test we are going to find whether the two variables that means in my case interest rate and inflation are co integrated or not so my null hypothesis is that these two variables are not co integrated and my alternative hypothesis is that these two variables are co integrated so first step was we have to find the stationary so it will be applied ardl model will be applied only when one of these two variables will be stationary at i0 and another will be stationary at i1 so let's check whether these two variables are stationary at i0 or i1 so for that uh, we have to library t series package also i have already libraryed it so let me check the stationary that will be checking by adf model so adf dot test and first of all inflation rate and if you are going to see the inflation rate is already stationary at level now let me check for interest rate so adf dot test now interest rate now you can see that p value is more than 0.05 so it's not stationary at level so let's convert it to the first difference so i am giving the name d is interest rate is equals to diff interest rate now i have just taken the first difference now let me check it so adf dot test now let me put the variable that is d interest rate okay now you can see that p value is less than 0.05 so that means over here when we were talking about these two variables inflation and interest rate inflation is stationary at level and interest rate is uh, stationary at first difference so that means one variable is stationary at level and another variable is stationary at first difference so we can opt for ardl model 
Now we will be applying ARDL model to check whether these two variables are co-integrated or not. As the literature is saying that these two are having the long term relation. So let's prove it. So before uh, calculating your ARDL bond test, the second step was that we have to calculate the optimum lag. So let me check the optimum lag for these two variables. So for optimum lag, we will be using the command var, dot, var select. And first is my inflation rate. And you can see for inflation, my AIC is 1. So for inflation will be my dependent variable and your interest rate will be my independent variable. So for inflation, my war value is or you can say lag value is 1. Now let's check it for next one. Var select and for interest rate. Okay. Now you can see that AIC is 3. So that means the lag value is 3 over here in the independent case. Now next step is to create the model that I have already told you how to create the model. Now I am going to create the ARDL bond test and I am going to see whether these two variables are co-integrated or not. And if they are co-integrated, we will go with the VCM model. That means I will be calculating the error correction term. Now for that, we have the command over here. Okay, my command will be ARDL bond, ARDL bond. And after that, you will be writing the data. That means you will be giving the instruction to R that from where he has to pick up the data. So my file name is data underscore Indian eco. So I am giving the command that from this file, pick up the data. And my formula will be, first of all, I am going to write the dependent variables, which is my inflation rate. And then your tilt sign and then your dependent variable, which is my interest rate. Now, after that, what I have to do, I have to write the case. That means which case I am talking about. So, I will be using case 3. And then max dot p, max dot p means your lag value of independent variable, which was my 3, and max t, a uh, max q, which will be my dependent variable, so which is 1, and then enter. Now, before pressing the enter, let me tell you what you mean by case 3. We have different cases over here. So, see over here, case 1 means no intercept and no trend. Case 2 means restricted intercept and no trend. Case 3 is unrestricted intercept and no trend. Case 4 is unrestricted intercept and restricted trend. And case 5 is unrestricted intercept and unrestricted trend. So, normally in finance, we normally take the case 3. So, that's why I have taken the case 3 over here. Now let's press enter. Now these are my results. Now over here you can see whenever we have to find that whether these two variables are co-integrated or not, we check the Pissarin and Schintz and Smith test 2001. So this is a test for checking whether there is a co-integration or not. And in this we will get the F test statistics value and we will go for this. Now, how to check whether these two variables are co-integrated or not. Now, you can see this value 16.4608. Now, we are going to compare this value from this table. If this value is less than I0, so that means we are going to accept our null hypothesis. And what is my null hypothesis? If you will check my null hypothesis over here, Null hypothesis means no co-integration. That means if value is less than I0, that means no co-integration. And if value is, this F statistics value is more than I1. So that means in that case, we are not accepting the null hypothesis. That means we are accepting the alternative hypothesis. 
in my case the value is 16.46 which is more than 5.73 if i am going to take 5% critical value so that means my interest rate and inflation are co-integrated now if they are co-integrated there will be the error correction term also so let me see now uh, let me show you how to calculate the error correction term now since over here that there is a difficulty in the plot because figure margins are too large so let me adjust my figure margins so now if i have adjusted and i'll do it again the same command i am running it again so now you can see we will talk about these figures later now let me show you the error correction term okay now you can see over here the ec1 ec1 means error correction term and you can see that error correction term is 0.708 and which is significant so this is my error correction term and my model now let's check for diagnostic check now you can see over here error correction model output your details are here now let me check the diagnostic and if you remember about the diagnostic check means we have to check the residuals and whenever we are checking the residuals so let me write it over here my first is that your data that means residuals are normally residuals are residuals have normality now whenever the residuals are normality my null hypothesis will be that my residuals are normal and alternative will be my residuals are not normal now you can see over here that shapiro will test and your value is p value is 1.77 e minus 09 which is less than 0.05 so my diagnostic check is saying that my residuals are not normal so it hardly matters because in time series you will never get the normality now second part that we have to check is our homoscardicity so the second is that the homoscardicity should should be there in your residuals so our null hypothesis over here is there is homoscardicity so i can write it the second part that h0 should be equals to there should be homoscardicity in residuals homoscardicity means that the variables are scattered that means variance is equal from all the spaces and over here you can see that the p value is 0.6207 which means it is more than 5% so we have to accept our null hypothesis so we can say that my residuals are homoscardicity which we are going to prove it so our second condition is fine now third is that there should not be any autocorrelation among the residuals so for the third condition my h0 will be no autocorrelation and alternative will be there is an autocorrelation now if you can see the p value over here for eljung box or if i am going to see the autocorrelation from uh, brush godfrey press the point both the cases p value is more than 0.05 which means that we have to accept the null hypothesis and null hypothesis says that there is no autocorrelation among the residuals so that means my all the diagnostic check is there so that's all how we are going to check the co-integration your error correction term and the diagnostic check for the ardl model hope you are able to understand it thank you